Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build my Cerberus Tricopter. The Cerberus is a 300 class tricopter bred specifically for racing. With so many people getting together to race multi rotors, it was only a matter of time before I went ahead and designed my own so I could join in on the action. And this is what I had come up with. And you might ask yourself, Alex, why a tricopter? And I ask, why not? I like tricopters. They're a little bit more fluid than a quad, and in my opinion, it makes a better race vehicle. The Cerberus can take a 1500 to 3000 milliamp hour three cell battery pack strapped to the bottom of the frame. It is also plenty capable of holding a full FPV video system. While I'm sure you'll find the tricopter incredibly durable, it's only a matter of time when racing before you wreck and break something. And for that, I include a complete crash kit with the aircraft. That includes extra arms, extra swivel assembly, and even extra landing gear. You'll need between an hour and a half and two hours to assemble the frame and wire it up. The frame is built around a series of keyways that interlock together, making it go together in record time, and it's simple enough even a beginner should find no problem building this frame. So with that, now we'll go on to building it. We're going to start this build with the most difficult part first, the swivel assembly. You want the swivel assembly to be warm to the touch, not necessarily hot, but just warm. I'm using a heat gun here, but anything from a microwave oven to hot water and perhaps even leaving it in your pocket for a little while will work. What this does is heats up the plastic so that it's malleable and will keep it from cracking. Once heated, add a little bit of glue to the side with the open gap on either side of the gap. Then take the larger swivel piece with the three holes in it and the bottom tab and insert it into one end rough side out. Get it squared up, then taking your needle nose pliers, snap one side into place. Once snapped in, go ahead and repeat the process for the other side. Once snapped in, the plate should be fairly secure. Now repeat the process for the outside. Add a little bit of glue to either side of the slot. Then taking the smaller swivel and with the rough side out, insert one of the tabs into the small slot. Using a pair of pliers, snap one side into place. Once done, repeat the process for the other side. Again, the plate should feel fairly secure. Now we're going to install the rear motor. Place a single washer over one of the motor mount screws. I recommend using a little bit of thread locker here, but it's not entirely necessary. Install the screw into the motor, tightening down firmly but be sure not to over tighten this. Over tightening these screws could cause the plates to crack. Hand tight is more than sufficient. Now it's time to install the servo horn on the swivel assembly. Choose a servo horn where the holes closely match the three holes in the swivel. Then take two wood screws and screw them partially into the servo horn. Then line the servo horn up with both holes and screw the wood screws all the way into the plastic, securing them firmly. Be careful not to over tighten this as the screws can strip out the plastic and leave you with slop in your mechanism. Using a pair of diagonals or wire cutters, cut off the tips of the protruding screws as close to as flush with the swivel mount as possible. Once cut, trim the extended end of the servo horn as close to the bottom of the swivel assembly as possible so it doesn't get caught up on the arm. Now we'll install the servo. With the servo centered, place the servo into the servo horn so that the servo lays relatively flat. Take the securing screw, place it through the swivel hole and into the servo mount. Then, with a small screwdriver, go through both holes in the swivel mount and secure your servo horn to the servo. Now we'll assemble the rear arm. Start by taking the swivel mounts and installing them in the outermost slot. You want the shiny side to be out to make a slick surface. 
The short landing gear is then installed in the next rectangular slot. It doesn't matter which side is shiny and which side is rough. Then place the other rear arm plate over top of your assembly, lining up all of your holes. These will be a tight fit, so it might take a little bit of work to get them in there. Then take your mount plate and place it over top of the assembly. Again, shiny side or rough side could be out. It doesn't matter which in this case. Now install your swivel assembly with the long stainless steel bolt. This is the only metal bolt in the kit. Place the bolt through the swivel assembly and through the swivel mount. Take the nylock nut and place it in the middle of the mount, screwing it down into place. You don't want this to be tight. You want to be sure it moves freely when done. The landing gear is completed with the other mating piece. Simply add a little bit of glue and placing the short leg towards the back, simply slide it up into place. Install the rear arm assembly into the bottom plate. The bottom plate is the one with the two slots cut out of the back. Simply snap this into place, and then take one of the nylon bolts, the long ones, and place it up through the bottom. Then take a single nut and screw it all the way down. Tighten this down into place and be sure there is very little play in the assembly. The servo is likely to need shims so that the axle on the servo and the axle of the swivel pivot align. For this I'm using double sided tape. Simply lift up the servo, drop the shim underneath, and then to secure it use the T-shaped pieces with the hole in the top. These go through the slots in the side with a long bolt going through the top securing the servo in place. Of course, zip ties may also be used instead. Next step is to assemble the front arms. Start by installing the motors. Again, use a washer for each bolt and a little bit of thread locker to ensure the motor stays in there nice and tight. From there, start install it by installing the landing gear into the side of one of the supports. The strange looking rectangular piece goes into the, the slot in the support arm as well as into the landing gear. Then the other side of the landing gear goes through. Again, note that the hooks are towards the top of the arm. On the front of the motor plate, there are two slots that will accept these two hooks. It simply folds over, locks in place, and then all of the keyways on the uprights go into the keyways in the arm, as I have shown here. Finally, you'll lock the system together with a single nylon bolt and nut. Repeat the same process for the other arm. Again, the landing gear goes into the vertical slot with the strange looking rectangular piece, locking it in place. The two side arms go together and then the motor mount goes on the top. Again, the hooks and the long tabs are towards the top. Slide the hooks in place slide it back, push the tabs through, and you have yourself another arm. Once you have the arm all tightened up, go ahead and insert the last support of your landing gear into both pieces. Again, I recommend gluing this, but friction seems to hold fairly well. The next step is to install the flight controller. Place four bolts through the square pattern all around the cross in the middle of the frame. This cross is the center of gravity. I'm using 440 screws, but some flight controllers come with their own mounting hardware. The reason to install this now is because you won't have access in later steps. I also used fuel tubing as a small damper. This is not required, but some might find the flight controllers a little bit less glitchy with some added damping. Now it's time to make this unit start looking like a helicopter. Start by grabbing the plate with the U-shaped piece in it and add a little bit of adhesive in between the two slots in the front. Do the same with the, the plate on the base. The two strange trapezoidally shaped parts fit into these slots and they support the front should you choose to use a camera. Press them in nice and secure and then follow that with the front arms and the rear swivel assembly. These should fit in fairly tight as well. 
With all pot five pieces in place, add your lower base plate. Be sure that all your slots line up properly and snap it into place. When everything is locked together, flip it over and install your nylon bolts into the three holes coinciding with each arm. When tightening these bolts down, be sure not to over tighten them or they will snap. They are only meant to hold it down strong enough so that it doesn't come apart. Nylon bolts naturally lock themselves and thus excessive torque is not required. Next up is installing the prop guards. This step is entirely optional as these aren't required to fly the vehicle. The prop guards will be installed with nylon bolts. They are not designed to take a crash. They are simply to keep your props from striking an object should you fly close to it. In the event of a crash, the nylon bolt is likely to break. However, in certain crashes, the prop can catch the prop guard and actually damage the prop guard. Of course, the three bolt prop guards go on the front arm and the four bolt prop guard goes on the rear. Again, secure these down with the nylon bolts. They should be tight enough the prop guard doesn't swing freely, but with side to side resistance, the prop guard should move. This should allow the prop guard to get out of the way in a front end crash without damaging it too much. With all your bolts in and secure, it's time to do a little cleanup to the bottom of the frame. Take a pair of diagonals or wire cutters and cut off each bolt right at the top of the nut. You don't need much protruding from the bottom. And if you need to remove it, the nut will cut new threads and allow you to reinstall later if necessary. The arms have enough room to install most small 12 amp speed controls inside them. So if you don't want to mount over the top, inside the arms is always a good option. When inserting the ESC into the slot, note that in front of the arm, in front of the vehicle, there is a small slot for the wires to come out. You'll probably have to fish these out with a pair of needle nose pliers or other device, but they, there should be plenty of room to bring the wires out and around and then up into your flight controller. Now the rear arm can be a little bit tricky as there's more material to go through. It's going to slide back a little bit into the frame, but its insulation again is the same as the rest. Of course, some speed controls just don't fit inside the arms, and for these, mounting on the top is fine. Mounting on the top also gives them a lot more cooling from the wash of the rotors. I'm just using basic welder adhesive here, but double-sided tape and or zip ties will do just fine. The best place I have found for the receiver is on the base plate right up against the rear arm. I mounted my power link board and connections right next to the receiver. I also use a JST as a quick disconnect between the video system and the main power bus as I've shown here. For the video transmitter, I simply glued it to the top of the frame right in front of the flight controller. The camera will go right in front of this. Small video transmitters give enough room for themselves as well as a camera on this frame without any issue. I'm mounting a camera to the front of the vehicle with a small nylon bolt. This should be strong enough to hold it in place, but in a crash, it will break free without any problems. I'm running all of the wires through the middle of the frame to keep them hidden and out of view. The wires are run through the frame, then back to my power link board, which will control the video system. Once I've got that installed, next I go ahead and install, install my LRS antenna. I'm using a coil loaded dipole for compactness and I don't expect to exceed six miles with this airframe. The battery is secured into place with simple Velcro straps. Of course, since the battery determines the center of gravity of the vehicle, you're going to want to shift the battery front to back until the center of gravity is approximately in the center of the flight controller, which is also where the little plastic cutout cross would be. In order to do this, I simply slipped a another piece of plastic underneath and attempted to the balance the vehicle. 
When the vehicle is being balanced, if it falls forward, then you need to move the battery back. If it falls backwards, then you need to move the battery a little bit further forward. In case you needed ideas on what the power supply bus should look like, I removed the bottom plate here to show you detail of my wiring. There's nothing to it. I simply soldered all the positive and all the negative wires together in a bundle, then covered them with liquid electrical tape. And that concludes the build tutorial. Go out, fly, and enjoy.